But what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at our own examples from our own AYP community, AYP club. And these, these were posted some time ago, but uh, Jared gathered them together. And I'm going to switch over to you, Jared. OK, tell us who this is. All right. Uh, these are photos from Christopher Scott Carpenter. Good right. friend. We've critiqued a lot of his photos. We critiqued a few photos from this. Uh, and this was in New York City uh, at some protests early on in the war. So I'm just kind of going to go through uh, some of these photos. Yeah, we're not really stop here because you got to read that yeah. sign. I had never seen this before and I had to, you know, it's these people are not laughing and it's very serious. But there is a little levity here that, you know, introduces itself into this. We're not really critiquing these photographs. We're just showing them as examples of getting in there and telling that story. This last one, go back to that last one with the shadow. I really, yeah. that's, that's really a cool image. You know, it's got a lot of, a lot of things going on in it. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the, the, sh the shadows are, make it really powerful and the grid lines and then the guy up there walking through the frame. Yeah. That's a very cool. Yeah. Powerful. It's funny because normally you wouldn't want shadows on the thing that you're doing, but it, it has a you new know, meaning. It, and it, it tells a whole story in one frame. You know, New York City loves Ukraine. It's just this one image tells a lot of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Good work, Scott. And I'm going to encourage him and everybody else to start using that hashtag when you when you post these things. And if you would tag me then I can see these, but we'll, we'll pull them up on the, um, you know, on Instagram, we'll have, you can definitely populate that hashtag. Go back to that last one. I remember, I remember going over, yes, these are powerful, aren't they? Yeah. We talked about this one um, as a critique. I, I love the, the framing of that. I'd like to hear your guys' comments as we're looking through these. That's the last one. Yeah. So Jeff said these these are powerful and they are. I, give me your feedback. And I'd especially like to know if you guys have ideas in your own catalog of photography. Maybe you've already captured some photographs that you could start telling the story. Here's my idea. I'm, I'm going to just give you this idea. What if we could use what we where we stand as artists and photographers to help end these wars, you may say, Mark, that's pretty far-fetched. How are you going to turn away the Russian tanks? Well, you know, it's been done. I could tell you story after story. Gandhi freed his whole nation from violence with a campaign. It started with a few people. There's an excellent movie. If you've never seen it, you've got to see it. It's called Gandhi. And Ben Kingsley plays Gandhi. It's just unbelievable as a performance. And you hear and see the story of how he was able to free his entire nation from the yoke of the British Empire. It's not unlike what we're seeing happening in the Ukraine, I hate to say. It's a similar kind of thing of another nation coming and invading a sovereign state and taking it over. And it shows you, you watch this film, you see the entire transition of them being completely in their own country, being considered third or fourth class citizens, literally, with no freedom. And just by his strong will and his undeniable purpose, he was able to free his nation in a fairly short period of time. Okay, who else have we got here? Um, we've got some photos here. Let me open these up. Oh, JM wanna... asked this question, are, ha are hashtags effective to use on Facebook? I think so. Because, you, you know, try it. When you click on one, you'll see it does bring up uh, other hashtag photographs. I think the so, power is if you're using one that a lot of other people are using too. Yeah. You know? So as a group, if we're using this, then it can help. I want to make a out. game out of seeing how quickly we can populate this hashtag, you guys. Let's see how quickly we can make this 
and noticeable as a movement. Okay, tell us who we're looking at here. All right, this is Jeremy Lindenfield, another AYP club member, and he did a lot. If you were in AYP club in 2020, you know that he covered a lot of the protests. He's a uh, photojournalist student. Uh, right. And so these are some of his that he took during the protest. Go back to that last one again, just say, yeah. Really like that one. What's great is the the formation of it. You know, it just it it you you just see the you know the people kind of disappearing into the shallow depth of field, but you can see the people in the foreground. You know, the fist raised, the woman tying her bandana on. There's a lot going on here that's visually very interesting. And the fact of getting this while this group is walking, because they're walking, he had to be walking at the same time backwards. So I don't know how he got this. Uh, yeah, he had to be walking backwards. Picture. Yeah. The one that gets me is the woman looking oh. right at him there in the bandana. Yeah. She's looking at him. Just see her eyes. Yeah. She's really powerful. And I believe these were taken in a lot of different locations. So I don't think these were any one specific city. Wow, that one's really amazing. Yeah, I believe we critiqued this one, if I remember I do correctly. remember it, yeah. It's just... So all these can be hashtagged. We're going to ask, we're going to definitely make this um, known in the AYP Club. We do have a hashtag AYP Club, by the way, which you should always use. Whenever you're Definitely. posting stuff, just no matter what kind of photograph it is. So make sure you because we have quite a few in that in that in that hashtag. So make sure you use. All right. And then we've Club. got a couple photos from if you're early longtime fans, you'll recognize some of these photos as well. Um, Magnus and Nemi Pearson are yeah. uh, father daughter. Fantastic duo. And these are some pictures that Magnus took of in Bangkok when there was a coup d'etat happening. Magnus is the dad and his daughter and Emmy at that time when we were seeing a lot of her work was like 15 or 16. Now look at this. Wow. Talk about <laughs> some, what we say in Spanish huevos. <laughs> yeah. Um, getting right in there. Like that's, Pretty amazing. Notice he has a yeah. helmet on it strapped onto the back of his uh, yeah. backpack. This was a photographer partner, I believe, they were working with on that project. I mean, so. And then yeah. uh, here were some that Nemi took at a demonstration in France. Keeping in and mind I believe that she was, she was very young at the time yeah. when she did these. Right up against, right? close and personal. I remember, I believe we talked about her. This is not a telephoto lens. These are like 50 or 35 millimeter lens that she's shooting with. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, having something that's not quite a protest. These are some photos that Magnus took of refugees coming in from Myanmar. Yeah. And he took a couple of pictures of some children. Now, keep in mind, too, you guys, that when you post something, it's not just the photograph. It's your caption and it's what you write about as well. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed I've been doing some research on Instagram. Many photographers who get a lot of traction put a lot of work into their descriptions. You know, they don't just say, yeah, this is a child, um, a refugee. I mean, they tell as much of the story about it as they can because we learn things through visual images, obviously, but that doesn't tell the whole story. We don't know. I wouldn't know that, that, that she was a refugee just by looking at this. Mm -hmm. So you have to fill people in and they will read your story. They do read your story. So... This is a tip from Chris Burkhart, by the way, you know, who has like probably about 5 million followers now. And he was saying that you really want to make sure you do tell your story in your description and your caption because it draws people in and it gives them a way of really understanding what, what your image is all about. 
Okay, let's see who. I think the yes. final thing that we were going to talk about was actually a book. That yes, somebody from has Tim. Made. So, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about this a little bit, since. So um, yes, Tim put this book together in uh, aftermath of the shootings that occurred in Boulder, Colorado. Um, and it starts off with texts from people that he knew, which I thought was a really interesting way. You can tell your story in a lot of different ways. Go back to those texts for a second. Um, so, and then he, he writes about it, but very, very profound way of beginning his story with screenshots of his text. And then he has a, a, a little description here, a little bit of text. Wasn't there some text opening the story where I saw it fly by there? There it yeah. is, okay. So he tells the story and kind of what it's all about. And then we go through and look at his images. And this is the aftermath. So it's what, you know, how people responded in Boulder to this horrific incident. And then, and then this a part was, two. Part two is really powerful. It's the hundred yards, like this is the range of, of the gun that was being used was um, actually greater than, I, I think it says it in there somewhere. In fact, it had an effective range. Effective of range of a hundred yards. yards. That's why he called this a hundred yards. So he was photographing what was within range of the shooter people. You know, this is obviously an act of violence and he was able to counteract that. Remember that creativity is the antidote for destruction and violence. So rather than just absorbing, this is another really important thing. Is that it, Jared, as far as? Yeah, that's okay. it for that. So rather than just absorbing these, these terrible moments, as artists, if you can do anything about it, including telling the story, you're one step forward. The worst thing to do is to do nothing and to see what's going on. I, honestly, this was my call to action as far as like, I can't stand this war. I don't, you know, I don't like any war. And when I was a kid, I grew up during the Cold War. And we, it was, it was a horrible time, you guys, because we had neighbors building fallout shelters. Now, a fallout shelter would only hold that one family, nobody else. In fact, you were, I believe, part of the civil, de civil defense instructions were to fend off, you know, keep your fall, keep your shelter from being invaded. I grew up with that. the the whole The whole USSR, uh, America, Cold War was was going on full steam, and then we had Vietnam, and you know, I participated in those demonstrations. I didn't really use my camera as a tool, though. I did a little bit. I did photograph some of those demonstrations, which I have only in negative form, and I do need to pull them out and scan them. So I, I, it's not true that I don't have photographs of it. But if you can do anything about it, you're moving, you're moving a consciousness, an awareness from maybe numb. I think a lot of people are very numb to the fact that right here and right now on the other side of the world, this is... This is very real. Their country's been invaded. Civilians are being killed. Art schools are being bombed. I mean, you've heard these stories. We, we have to participate. <laughs> and we have to be socially conscious. Now, if you don't want to do this, that's fine. This maybe isn't for everybody. But I think all of us have that seed of understanding that we need to do something about situations that are going on around us that are destructive or violent or um, t t you know, causing misery or heart hardship, whatever, you know, and do something about it. And that's where I'm advising you to go with your photography is, you know, back where we started here. 
It's a symbolic hashtag. It can cover a lot of stuff besides just peace, anything in, in the world of violence, destruction, or the other side. Like we saw the refugee kids. Well, that's not war, but it's the result of, and it's a, it's a depiction of something very important and very powerful. Thank you guys for joining me. I'd like to hear your, your continued thoughts about this. Uh, Jared will get the blog post up soon, and we'll put links to the things that we've uh, covered here so that you guys can see them and you can add to it. Um, post on Instagram and Facebook using the hashtag Project Create Peace. This is our project. What if, let's do a what if. What if this really caught on? There's millions and hundreds of millions of photographers out there. What if we all put a little effort into this and we could show our solidarity in terms of ending these things and saying, look, we're going to show you what this is. We're not going to hide it and we're going to tell our stories about it. So thank you, guys. Always a pleasure to have you. And I'll see you during the week. By the way, please follow me on Instagram because we're doing a lot of work there. We're posting regularly little stories, um, shortcuts from our great photographer interviews and my own photographs. So please, if you haven't already followed me, please do so. And do use this hashtag. Okay, so... I'm going to just end by asking you guys to please subscribe and enable the bell and like, comment, share. Share this with your friends. We're going to trim this video down so you guys have a little shorter version of it that you can use. And uh, it'll be on our blog post as well. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Take care, you guys. Stay well, stay safe, stay creative. If you see something, say something. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.